how the world of science is dealing with and fighting over the demotion of Pluto. NewsHour correspondent Betty Ann Bowser has our Science Unit report. Educators like Chris McCall, who runs the Sudicum Planetarium in Nashville, have a challenge. How many planets are there in our solar system? Nine, eight, anybody have a different answer? There was already a show there called Nine Planets and Counting, so McCall had to do a quick rewrite. Why should Pluto be a planet? Because back in the 50s they told us it was. <laughs> I was raised that way and I'd hate to see it be gone now all for all right. these years. The downgrading of Pluto to a new status called Dwarf Planet was decided by a vote of less than 400 of the International Astronomical Union's 10,000 members at a meeting in Prague. For the first time, they defined a planet, an object in the solar system that must be round, must orbit a star, and must clear out its neighborhood. In other words, it must not share its orbit around the sun with any other large objects. They said Pluto didn't fit the bill because it had many other objects nearby. The decision sparked a revolt among planetary experts, like these at a recent meeting of hundreds of astronomers and astrophysicists in Pasadena. They put together a slapdash result, which is not the way we normally do science. They did it by politics, by voting, which is not the way we do science. Alan Stern was upset by the way the decision was reached. Nobody ever voted on the theory of relativity. Nobody voted on whether DNA is the structure that encodes um, genetic information. When people put ideas out there, the ideas um, r uh, rise or fall based upon how well they fit the available data. But we don't actually sit down and vote. That's not the way it's done. Stern is principal investigator for the New Horizons spacecraft, currently on its way to the first close scientific encounter with Pluto. He was so upset by the decision, he put a protest petition on the Internet. In four days, more than 300 scientists replied. Astronomer Mark Sykes worked with Stern on the petition. Every major discipline uh, is reflected on the, on the petition as, as saying, you know, we, we, we have a problem with this. We can't use it. We need something better. Under the rules of the International Astronomical Union, it will be three years before a new planet definition can be considered. But that hasn't stopped the protests. Stern is disturbed about a requirement that to be a planet, an object must clear its neighborhood. I think a planet is very simply an object um, that has grown to a size, uh, that it becomes spherical under its own self-gravity. That simple? It's that simple. None of this having to clear out the neighborhood stuff? I don't know who made that up. You think that's silly? None of that. I think it's unworkable. I think it's completely silly. One astronomer who signed the petition had already written a book entitled, Is Pluto a Planet? David Weintraub thinks the new definition could confuse the status of other planets in the solar system. Jupiter hasn't cleared its orbit, so perhaps Jupiter's not a planet. I don't think that's what they intended. Neptune, pretty big object, it has this other object that crosses its orbit and is in a very stable orbit, and that object is named Pluto. So Neptune has not cleared its orbit. So I guess Neptune's not a planet either. It's not just scientists who are unhappy. The public seems to have a special fondness for the only planet discovered by an American. Anybody hear about Pluto in the news lately? Margie Gifford's sixth grade science club in Lebanon, Tennessee, has been having an intergalactic meltdown since all of this happened. How many of you? felt disappointed, upset, sad, or downright mad when you heard the news about Pluto. Evan, what's so special about Pluto to you? We've always called it a planet. We've learned about it as a planet. Why should we change it? We've never actually had a real definition as a planet, and so we shouldn't change it just because we don't think that we should have a real definition now. Why didn't we have one earlier in the years? So what do you think about this definition? I think the definition would have to be... As part of their protest, the sixth graders are producing a program on the Pluto controversy to run on the school's TV station. Even comedian Stephen Colbert has joined the fray by grilling astrophysicist Neil Tyson, 
who's Hayden Planetarium in New York City, took Pluto out of its planet display years ago. I never wanted to kick Pluto out of the solar system. I just wanted to group it with its sure brethren. Sure sounded. They had a funny way of showing with it. With its icy brethren in the outer solar system. And that's all we did so, at the sure. Rose Center for you Earth and Space. You can you want, just not here, okay? Not, well, not in my backyard. Got, that's what you said. Not in my backyard, got Pluto. It's family where I think it's happier there because it's the, one of the biggest Are of the ice Are you saying Pluto balls. should be with its own kind, separate but equal? Uh, yeah, I guess that comes out that way, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> Tyson decided Pluto did not belong with the planets because as a giant ice ball, it had very little in common with them. I got hate mail from third graders. What did they say? Well, they just, well, it was not so much hate mail, but anger mail. Anger mail. Please, Dr. Tyson, don't demote our favorite planet. It's a And here's a picture of it so you can make a model of it and put it in your exhibitry. And it's in whole packages with cover letters from, from science teachers that, that, that are, like, egging them on. Tyson thinks the traditional academic business of counting planets, no matter how many there are, is an outdated way to look at the skies. To believe that just counting them and memorizing them in order from the sun, to believe that that's an interesting exercise, misrepresents what we've actually discovered about the solar system. And here in this facility, we group objects according to properties that are kind of interesting. Like some are large and gaseous, others are small and rocky, others are icy, some have storms. Let's talk about that. And if Pluto is a planet, then how to name other large objects being discovered near it in a faraway region called the Kuiper Belt? That was the quandary California Institute of Technology scientist Michael Brown faced when he discovered an object he named Eris. Now what this is, is a little, little postage stamp of the sky and three pictures in a row, uh, one, two, three. And each of these little dots is a star, very, very far away. And right in the center, this one right here, you can see is barely moving across the sky. So over three hours, you can actually see that this thing has moved. He did not call it a planet. Instead, uh, Kuiper Belt object is, is what I would call it. Brown says as planetary scientists discover more and more objects, the new definition of planet will be very useful. Uh, I think it's absolutely great. It needed to happen for a long time, and this is, it's the right definition. You'll hear complaints. Uh, people like to nitpick and say, well, but this, but that, but this, but that. Astronomers don't deal very frequently in definitions, and so when they come up with a definition, uh, they're, not, they're not used to having people um, pick at it and figure out all the little problems. Tyson says the scientific community will eventually come together on a planet definition, whether it includes Pluto or not. The real issue here is, it's not a fight about what Pluto is. Pluto hasn't changed. Pluto's just Pluto. It's this ice thing out there with a really funky orbit. The real problem is, the word planet has not been defined since ancient Greece. And if you don't have a definition, of course you're going to have arguments. Stern and Sykes already have a website up inviting experts from all over the world who are unhappy with the definition to a conference to discuss the science of planets. And organizers say there will be no voting.